Okay, this will be my last video for today. We were talking about how to refine type in Illustrator. The big difference so far with Photoshop is that you're able to run it on your own custom path. I'll demonstrate that again. I'm just gonna use the pencil tool <coughs> to make a little path here. And then I'm gonna use the type on path tool, click on that. And I'm gonna type in my text. You'll see this little plus sign it means that there's more text there than I was able to able to fit. So then I need to shrink it on so I can get all of it. Ah. And then if I wanted to add on and give myself a little bit more space, I can use the pencil tool. Click on the path, and of course I can add to it. Right. Like magic scissors. These are open, empty paths that I'm creating. So they're not actually there, they're just guiding paths. But then when I use the type tool and I play with the sizes, and I hold down Option and I play with the space between the letters, which is called the kerning. And notice how I created it on two separate paths so I can play with the letting by hand. And I can even just grow it all and keep it all as a vector and still as a type tool. And I can even rotate it all just with the large selection tool. And I can change the path it's on. So if I want the, the to go up there, I can just redraw it. Or maybe curve it down a little bit. So this is how to refine it using Illustrator. Very helpful, I can even stretch it. And this is getting very close to making it so that typeface is its own thing. But we haven't truly modified it yet. So really modifying it, we have to turn it into vectors so that we can no longer edit it with a type tool as though it's in a word processor. So you wanna make sure you've adjusted all of your kerning and you've gotten it to look the way you want it to look as much as you can before we do this next step. And this next step, which is just a little fussier than it used to be, let's make sure everything's placed. So I have two layers in this one, or two uh, type paths in this one layer. But I'm gonna move the whole thing and put it with my spot illustration. So I'm using the large type tool. Maybe I can change the path a little bit. So it's not doesn't go quite so deep, something like that. And I can rotate it using the large selection tool, place it. And then the two seems really weird. So I'm going to extend this out like that. There we go. So you get it kind of as good as you can, and then you're gonna hover over it and click it until you see the box with the large selection tool, which is the black arrow. Then you're going to right click on the path and you should have the option to create outlines. Now this is my recommendation. Once you create outlines, each shape will become its own vector that you can modify. Before you do that, I think you should duplicate them. So I'm gonna select that whole layer and then I'm going to make a new blank layer. I'm going to select them all and hit Edit Copy, Command C. Then I'm going to lock that layer, turn it off, select a new layer on top, just organizationally, and then say Edit Paste in Place. And then once it's pasted in place, you can see the big square. I can right click and I can say Create Outlines. And now 
they are all vectors that can individually be selected. And now at last, instead of just refined from the existing typeface, they can be modified. I can individually rotate them. I can individually draw them. So now with the W, maybe I want that bottom stem to be a lot longer. Now this isn't a type design class, this is just a type design project. But there is a lot to it within the history of type design. If you wanted to add decorative serifs to your type, that is a way of modifying it and making it your own, your own custom type. If you want to add little effects like little drops, though this isn't kind of like a weeping angel kind of project, but that is modifying the type. And once it's a vector, you can do that very easily. Remember that with the pencil tool, my favorite tool, you can set it to be more smooth. And that will help with some of the jitteriness because you just like a logo, you want your type design to be very clear, simple and versatile. And because these are for coloring books, or my project is for coloring books, it can be kind of nice if it's a little softer edged and not so angular. But I also want it very readable and not too loopy and strange. So remember, this is just remind you of your vector skills that we've been building with the spot illustration and with the logos. And I just try to customize everything a little bit inside and out. And be inspired by the different typefaces you are inspired by. Uh, L's taken from typefaces, unless you want something really clean. Oops, I didn't start and stop on the path. Remember, you have to start and stop on the path to use the magic scissors of the pencil tool, even if you're changing everything. But the L's are really boring. So it can be a lot of fun to modify those. And then C's, be careful of C's that when you play with them, they might look more like G's. So I often weaken the curve at the bottom of a C in order to help its readability, especially in lowercase. I might have a little too much smoothing going on here. And then remember, you can use the large selection tool just to stretch them and rotate them just like you would with the transform tool in Photoshop. And you just want your type to start looking better and better as you go. Now that they're vectors, you can individually play with the kerning, the spacing, how bold they are. You have control of every aspect. And yet you know it's readable because you already mocked it up with an existing typeface. Now, when you do this to the extent that it becomes a brand identity, then this kind of type design becomes what are called logo types, where the type is the brand image as opposed to just an image or pictorial logo. But here I'm not trying to do a logo type, I'm trying to do what's called a title flag. This is the title of the coloring book. I want it to look visually interesting. I can also just use the lasso and select parts of the vector to warp, place, modify on their own. And then of course the pencil tool 
to change it, even if it's just slightly. And if you end up using Illustrator a lot and doing this kind of type design, you'll very quickly you know, build your custom typefaces and your resources that work really well for the kind of jobs you like to do, the kind of images you like to have. And you can see the difference now between the welcome to and the nest, how the actual modifying of the type can really give it a lot more personality. You can also add other attributes. You don't need to limit this to just things you've created. I can cre or a type that you've already put in. Like I wanted to put little feathers into this. So I'm going to create that and I'm going to give it an outline by giving it a stroke which we haven't really done in class yet. So this stroke I'm going to fill with black. Hmm. Not white, with black. And then with the stroke options, this is for little feathers, I'm going to not make it uniform, I'm going to make it tapered or wavy. There we go. I'm going to increase its size. I can even play with custom from the library, uh, custom ways that it fills the stroke, but they get a little crazy. So, and they even have like color ones in there now. So I'm just going to stick with the basic. but I don't like this so much. Maybe that now. Yeah, so I'm going to stick with uniform. <laughs> so that's a stroke. Now here's the problem with the stroke. Because it is just one path, at its corner, you don't get to control how it tapers. That's why you'll often use kind of custom stroke shapes to try to taper it, but you don't get full control. So in order to turn this into a shape, that I can modify, I go to object, and very similar to how you create outlines for your type, I go to path and I say outline the stroke, and it will turn it into a fill path that I can then use my pencil tool to smooth, to refine, and to customize, just as though it was a typeface. So that's a good way you can use strokes with the pencil tool with smooth on as a good way of, of drawing your own vector type or your own vector resources, and then just turn them into outlines by outlining the stroke. Now I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna do Command C. I wish it was as simple as doing Command J in Illustrator, but Command J changes your viewing mode in Illustrator, and you don't want that. So instead I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna say, after I've copied it, I'm gonna say paste in place. Then I'm going to move it down and I'm going to rotate it and maybe shrink it a little, almost like they're animation frames. Then I'm going to say Command C, copy that, make a new layer, say Edit, Paste in Place, move that down, rotate it, shrink it a little bit. Then I can take all three of them by selecting multiples, holding down shift, and I can stretch it, and I can rotate it, and I can move it where I think it needs to be. And then I can also move them individually and get that arc. So all of these can help you customize your type to your heart's desire within Illustrator. Okay, that's everything about modifying type in Illustrator. And what we'll do next time is just, I'll finish this and then we'll save it as an EPS that we can bring into Photoshop. And next time we're gonna add this to our color illustration